Hi there, my name is Eli and welcome back to my channel, Jack Elijah. And in today's video, I am finally going to be doing a tutorial on how to give your dolls bangs. Now, I love giving dolls in my collection bangs. As you can see behind this Cleo, I've given all of those dolls bangs and plenty more in my collection. And I feel like I've finally gotten really good at it. Like I've fine tuned my technique and my craft. And you know, just as a really quick disclaimer, this is my technique and how I do it but like with so many things that are like artistic and creative they are subjective and open to interpretation so you might have a different way that works for you but this is my technique and what works for me so follow along if you want to learn how I give my dolls bangs this is my test subject for today this is a monster ball Cleo denial doll and she has saran hair I find that saran hair is the easiest hair to give bangs to, but you can also give dolls with nylon or polypropylene bangs. I've given dolls um, like Rainbow High dolls bangs, I've given Bratz dolls bangs, so the same rules apply. I just find that saran is a little easier because this hair fiber is a little bit more heavier, so it's really easy to like shape the bangs, which you know, you'll find out later. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take down this doll's default hairstyle because underneath this hairstyle, believe it or not, this Cleo has a center part. And then from there, we can get started and I'll show you how to give your dolls gorgeous, gorgeous bangs. Okay, here is Cleo now with her hair down. I ended up cutting the elastic out because it was giving me issues, but you can see her middle part is forming. But I really just wanna like, get her hair flat before we start working on the bangs so i'm just going to give her a little bit of a preliminary boil wash to flatten her hair out and then we will come back and start shaping out the bangs but yeah let's go do a quick boil wash on this doll Okay, now we can officially start giving Cleo some bangs. Now, this is probably the most important step. It's, you know, sectioning out the bangs, the hair that we are going to eventually cut into bangs. Now, I'm gonna start on one side. This is, uh, what is it, her right side. And I kind of want the bangs to start like right there, you know? So I'm just gonna eyeball it, grab some hair, section it out. Okay, I have one side of Cleo's hair sectioned, and let me show you which hair I decided to section off. So this is the most important part, and it's really difficult in understanding for bangs, but you can see here, that's the hair that I've sectioned off. This is, I think, pretty ideal in what you're looking for when sectioning out your bangs. Now, you can see it's kind of like an L. I'm trying to go as close to the middle part and as close to the part line as I can. And I think most people would pull like these hairs into um, the bangs and then have that be part of the bangs. But these hairs right here that I'm holding are probably the most important part. Because if we were to pull these into our bangs, that's what's going to expose the scalp when the bangs are all finished. By not pulling these into our bangs and keeping these, you know, part of the free flowing hair, what that does is when these bangs that we have sectioned lay flat, you see that, you have a seamless finish. You're not going to have any exposed scalp. So that's about as much hair as we've sectioned. It's basically the hairline, the part line, and like one, two extra plugs of hair just to give us some volume. But you have to be really, really selective with this part right here. You're being really, really careful not to pull too much hair. Okay, so now let's section out the other half. And what I like to do is I kind of tuck this hair that I've already suctioned into the doll's arm so it stays right there. So that way I don't have to keep track of it. And then I'll move on to the, her left side. Now I'm gonna try to replicate and make this as symmetrical as possible. So, okay, let's see. We started about right there and we're ending about like right there. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna start making sure I don't have too much hair pulled. So a lot of these inner plugs right here, I'm not gonna need like these two. I don't need those two plugs. Um, cleaning this up, like I don't need that plug right there. I don't need this little plug. Um, I'm not even focused for y'all, okay. There we go, I don't need that plug. Um, a lot more, look, look at, see all those three right here? Those three plugs I don't need. I'm trying to section it out. Okay, cool. Let's see, let's take a closer look. There's a plug, there's a plug right here that I know I don't need. I'm trying to get that one to go, this one right here. This is a very tricky process. And because I've done it so many times, I kind of know what I'm looking for as far as how much hair I'm pulling. Okay, there you can see all those hairs in there. I don't need those hairs. We're really gonna be having all of the heavy lifting coming from the middle part and the hairline. Okay, I don't think it's symmetrical though. I think I pulled a little higher up here. So I'm gonna go and try to pull some of these hairs to make it symmetrical. Like I think right there, let's pull those down. Okay, you're probably like, Eli, this looks crazy. What are you doing? I swear it'll make sense. Okay, let's see. Okay, let me show you off the section bangs. Here's what they look like. Let me grab them. You can see right there, pretty symmetrical. Now, let me explain to you my thought process here and this is why they are sectioned off the way they're sectioned. So we are primarily focusing on pulling hair as close as possible to the hairline and the part line. You can see we maybe pulled one, two, three, four extra plugs that kind of like aren't part of the hairline or the part line just to give us some more volume. But you have to be really, really um, picky with how much hair you pull. If we were to pull more of these plugs right here, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have some bald spots. So you can kind of test it out. You can look at this hair. Imagine it laying flat against the head, flat, you know? There's no bald spots. If we were to pick just one, two, maybe three more of these plugs, we're gonna get into some tricky territory. So yeah, and then I want it to be as symmetrical as possible. I think we did that. Now this hair, I'm gonna boil wash it flat so we can begin shaping it for our bangs. Okay, we have now boil washed the bangs into place where we want them to be. But before I start laying these bangs out flat to shape them into place, I am going to give them a quick trim and get rid of some of the excess because I know we're not gonna be needing all this hair. So I kind of just eyeball it and say like, I think, you know, it's pretty good. Oh my gosh, she almost went flying, okay. Well, I caught her, okay. There's all the hair that I just trimmed and I'm gonna toss that hair. Now, I'm also using some like specialty embroidery scissors. I had someone comment on one of my videos to get embroidery scissors to cut hair with and only use them to cut hair with. So I followed that tip. I actually have two. I got these both from Michael's, um, you know, little embroidery scissors and they work really, really well for cutting hair. Now that we have our forced initial cut, now we can start shaping out the bangs. Okay, I'm doing a quick voiceover just because my mic had some issues in this clip, but it's fine. Now here are some of the tools that I'm using for shaping the bangs. I have a spray bottle that is just filled with water 
then I have a makeup spoolie, which is like my favorite tool. This is an e.l.f. Cosmetics makeup spoolie. You can get these really cheap almost any makeup store, cosmetic store, drugstore. And then I have this fine tooth metal comb that is also helpful. I don't really use that comb in this particular video just because I don't want to fray Cleo's tinsel. But dolls without tinsel, it's very, very helpful. And then I have some got to be glued styling gel. This is a very, very important because you need lots and lots of gel to get your bangs laying flat and how you want them. So as you can see, when I'm going over the hair just with like dry hair with my makeup spoolie, it's not doing much. So the first thing you have to do is you have to soak these bangs with tons and tons of water. So I'm taking my spray bottle and I'm going to really, really soak them. Then once they are nice and soaked, I'm going to then take some hair gel and then cover the gel all over the bangs. It's going to seem like lots of gel, but do not fret. It is fine. Okay, gel is your friend when it comes to bangs. And it's really going to help give it that weight and heaviness to have, help them lay flat. And it also really, really helps helps you shape them and then eventually cut them into the exact shape that you want. So yes, do not be afraid of gel. It's fine. It um, washes off really easy. If you get it on the face later, it's not going to stain. None of that dries clear. So do not fret. Now that we have the bangs soaking with gel, I can then take up my makeup spoolie and I'm going to start shaping them into place. Now this is very, very fun. You can really see the fruits of your labors. You can really see the bangs starting to take shape. And it's, I don't know, I really, really like this part. Um, I'll go over it with a spoolie and then I'll also take my finger to help kind of like lay the hair flat and smooth it out. I'm a very tactile person. I love using my fingers as a tool. Just make sure your hands are clean. And there you can see me flattening the bangs out with my fingers. I'm going to keep shaping these bangs into place until I get them in their final form. Then once they are like shaped just how I like them, I will then take even more hair gel and just apply a light coat over top. And then once that hair gel is applied, I'm going to let them fully dry before I move on to our next step. It's really important that you give your bangs enough time to dry before you move on to cutting them. Um, you do not want to like handle these when they're still wet and damp. So I know it's going to be really tempting to just grab your doll and start cutting the hair, but really, really please give it time to dry. I'm, I'm serious. You really want these to be dry before you move on to the next step. Okay, we are now on the final step. The bangs have had time to dry. And something that I like to do is I will take like my, my spoolie and just slightly gently lift some of the hair from the face. So it gives me some access with my scissors to go in there and trim them and i will take my embroidery scissors and we will go and give it the final cut now this is really all to taste depending how short or how long you like your bangs i really like my bangs to kind of like be covering the brows if you like a shorter micro bang then go ahead and cut your bangs shorter but now i will take my scissors and we will trim these into shape okay so let's start and this is really something that you have to go slow on to make sure your oopsie to make sure you're cutting them the length that you desire so this is kind of like a quick preliminary cut just to give me you know a good idea and starting point for how short i want them to be okay okay Okay, definitely uneven, longer on this side and shorter on this side, but it's fine. You just go in and you keep trimming and shaping them into place. I'm not that scared because I've been doing so many bangs now that I'm just kind of like fearless with it, you know? You can't really be scared. Okay. Ooh, we need to straighten them out. They are a little uneven. They're very uneven, but you know what? This is the process. This is what you do to shape your bangs is just trim them and see what works. Okay. This is a lot of excess hair. Let me go back in. Okay. Let's see. Obviously, we gotta get that little bit F off over there. Um, I'll flip it 
go on this side. Um, let's see. Okay. How's that looking? Mm -hmm. Something that I will also take is like a dry, clean makeup brush to kind of just like get some excess hair off of her face just to like clean her up a little bit. And now we can keep shaping them. How do they look? Hmm. They're still a little long. See, I like my bangs long, but I want them symmetrical. I feel like this side, they're a little longer. So I'm gonna still go in and even them out. Okay, let's see. There's one long hair here that's like finicky. Hmm, they look pretty good. This is a very straight cut. You can do a more rounded cut. You can do a V cut. It's really up to your personal taste. I like a straight cut though. Okay, we have some hairs there. Okay, I just finished cleaning their shape off camera just because, you know, I'm very finicky and I want them to look perfect. But a tip when I'm cutting the bangs is, you can see that when I started cutting them, they already started lifting from the face, as you can see. Um, but I like my bangs like really flat. So what I'll do is I'll take my like thumb and I'll kind of lay them flat to kind of get a better idea of their length and their symmetry. Because you can see right there, when I'm pushing them against the forehead, they look one way. And then when I lift my finger, they kind of puff out like that. Um, I really want this to be their kind of like ideal shape, not this. And now that they are done, you might think, okay, cool, boom, tutorial finished, we're done. Nope. I now will go in and re-flatten these out. So I'll take some more of my water and I'm going to flatten these bangs out. So I'm going to soak them back into place because I don't want them puffy hanging off the face like that. I really want them to lay flat. So I'm going to soak them once more. And yep, you guessed it. I'm gonna add some more hair gel. So there we go. Now let's go in with some more of my got to be glued styling gel. And I'm going to regel the bangs because now they are in their final shape. I want them to lay nice and flat once more. Okay. Using my finger, gently going across the hair. I know this is a lot of steps, but that's how you get those really nice perfect bangs. Oh, stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. They look so good. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to just kind of clean up the face with my finger. This is a different finger that has no gel. Take excess water off. And now we are going to let this dry one more time and the bangs will be finished. I know that's a lot of steps, but it's really, it's really worth it, I swear, I swear. Okay, so I'll check back on her when she is done drying. Okay, I am back and Cleo is all finished. Her bangs are nice and dry and I've redressed her in her Monster Ball attire. I think she looks so stunning. I love this finished look on her. I gave her back her purse, her scepter, her crown, and I'll show you the bangs a little bit more up close. There they are. I think they look good. Uh, I'm the type of person where I could look at it and be like, ooh, it's a little long there. I could cut it and trim it there. Really, you could look at bangs all day and find something to fix. So at a certain point, you just have to accept them for where they are and put them down and stop working on them because I'm definitely that person where I will take scissors and go at these bangs all day if I could. But I'm happy with where they are. I think they look pretty good. And even with all the tinsel, I'm very proud of them. And as you can see, we have no like bald spots on the side. There's her other side. I also pulled back her hair with her crown 
I think this style looks really cute and chic. And there she is, all ready for the monster ball. I hope you learned something new in today's video. Here's the thing with bangs. You know, even if you're not gonna give one of your dolls in your collection bangs from scratch, like I did with this Clio, a lot of the skills in this video are cross applicable to other circumstances and scenarios, whether you just wanna like fix up dolls in your collection. For example, here is this refreshed Clio. And when I got her, her bangs did not look this good. You know, sometimes when you get bangs from Mattel, they can be a little uneven or messy or disheveled. So using the techniques in this video, you can just fix them up, make them look nice and clean and sleek like this. Or in other circumstances, like with this stitched in style Frankie, she actually came with bangs. They were the bangs that are like thatched through the hairline. I don't love those bangs. Those are the bangs that the His Fits uh, three pack have for Meality and Persephone. Yeah, I don't like those bangs. So I just pull some hair from the center part and build on top of the bangs that already exist and, you know, just kind of enhance what was already there and make them look a little nicer. And another example is this Twyla doll right here. Twyla has a side part. And even with the side part, I was still able to give her bangs. These are kind of a V-shape micro cut. It's not something that I do often, but I like to switch it up and try new things out with my dolls and see what else I can pull off. Uh, it gives her face a totally different look. Yeah, and I love this doll too. So even with the side part, do not be deterred. You can give your dolls bangs. There's really no limit, you know. Your imagination is your potential with what you want to do for your dolls and what type of bangs you want to give them and even if you don't want to give a doll bangs from scratch you can still take these skills and apply them in other circumstances like i said now another quick example is this what is she fabulous pets draculaura so i did fix up her bangs as well as you can see they're very nice and sleek but the way that mattel cut these bangs one side has exposed a scalp right here. Now this is what you're trying to avoid when giving your dolls bangs. I just don't think this looks as good. And funny enough, this side of her face doesn't have it. So good, not so good. And here's the thing, when I first started giving my dolls bangs, I was doing this, okay? I was having some exposed scalp and I didn't have everything figured out and I was pulling too much hair. And that's why when I was showing you how to pull hair and sectioning out the bangs, I was really trying to emphasize being as careful with how much hair you're pulling because here's my Laguna that I gave bangs to. She's one of the earlier dolls that I had given bangs to. And as you can see, I pulled too much hair for her so she has some exposed scalp on both sides. I still love her. I still think she looks really pretty, but this is now what I try to avoid when I'm giving my dolls bangs. Um, these bangs are really thick and really dense. Now I err on the side of caution and try to be really selective with how much hair that I am pulling for my bangs. And this is kind of where I've landed on my technique and I'm uh, pretty happy with it. I think it looks really good. So let me know down in the comments below if you plan on giving any of your dolls bangs, if you've already given some of your dolls bangs. I am so curious. I hope you've learned something new in today's video and you can employ all of these techniques for the dolls in your own collection. And soon you'll be like me and you'll just have an army of Monster High dolls and all of them will have bangs. Because trust, this, the more you do it, the more you're gonna wanna keep giving dolls in your collection bangs, okay? This is my like, fourth Cleo that I've given bangs to. But I mean, come on, it's Cleo. I feel like Cleo always serves in bangs. Like, you're joking. This is how this doll should have come. If we're being honest, she should have had bangs from the get-go. So I'm really just fixing her up the way she was always meant to be, okay? Okay. Well, that is all I have for you today. My name is Eli, and this is my channel, Draculija. I always have so much fun making videos here on YouTube, so I hope you like, comment, and subscribe, all the fun YouTuber things, and I will catch you in the next one.